Welcome to Mikon's Hardware. In this video I'm going to tell you results of the detailed testing of these two Tinsha motherboards. The green one is Tinsha X99MH2 and the orange one is Tinsha X99MH. Both of these motherboards are almost identical. The major difference between them is this PCI Express X16 and X4 slot. During the test of this motherboard, I have figured out that this slot is also PCI Express X4, even though the physical connector is PCI Express X16. It means that even though you can physically install two graphics cards in this green motherboard, the second graphics card is going to work at PCI Express X4 bandwidth. There is also a few other minor differences between these two motherboards, for example the battery location, the beeper location and some other components on the motherboard. Other than that, these two motherboards are absolutely identical. There is no difference in performance between the orange one, which is X99MH, and the green one, which is X99MH2. Everything I'm going to tell about one motherboard is applicable to another one. That's why in this video I'm going to focus on X99MH2, but everything I'm telling about this motherboard is identical to X99MH, which you can see here. First, let's go through the motherboard specification. As any other Chinese X99 motherboard, this motherboard hosts a socket for Intel LG2011 version 3 CPUs. Intel Xeon E5 V3 and V4 CPUs are supported, as well as Intel Core i7. On the motherboard you will find four memory slots, but this motherboard supports only dual memory channel configuration. The green slots and the orange one on the X99MH are the main slots, and the black ones are the supplementary slots. If you're installing only two memory sticks and if you install one here and one here, you will get only one memory channel. You have to install your memory modules into the green slots and only if you have four memory sticks you need to populate the black ones. Additionally, on the motherboard you will find two PCI Express X16 connectors. The first one is operating at the full speed and full weights of PCI Express X16 3.0. The second one on X99MH has physical size of X4, on the green one X99MH2 it's a full width X16, but both of them are working at PCI Express 3.0 X4. You will also find two M.2 slots on the motherboard, one M.2 is PCI Express 3.0 X4 for SSD drives, the other one is for Wi-Fi and Bluetooth adapters. Sadly, I do not have any adapters to validate if this slot is working properly or improperly, but the M.2 slot for PCI Express NVMe SSDs is working properly. For the front panel connectors you will find everything you need. Audio exit over here, USB exit over here, USB 3.0 exit over here. Buttons and LEDs are connected over here. There is also a COM port and debug LED, but I do not have any means to validate if these are working properly or not. The motherboard has four SATA ports, but only these two are SATA 3.0, these two are SATA 2.0. Close to the SATA ports you will find the BIOS chip, which is located quite convenient. If you happen to break your motherboard, it's rather easy to mount the clip to restore your BIOS. The fan connectors are located over here, there are just two of them and both of them are four pin connectors. I don't really like this location because quite often when you install memory sticks over here, these memory sticks interfere with your fan wires which are supposed to be connected to these connectors. Close to the fan connectors you will find 8-pin CPU power. I don't like this location of CPU power, I would prefer it to be over here, close to the 24-pin power, but these motherboards have 8-pin CPU power located over here, which is a bit annoying. Let's also take a look at the back panel of the motherboard. Here you will find 4 USB 3 ports, 2 USB 2 ports, 1 Ethernet port, simple audio codec and 2 PS2 ports. Judging by the specification, this seems to be a really nice and neat motherboard for CPUs like E5 2620v3, 1620v3 or maybe even E5 2678v3. Now let's switch to my PowerPoint slides, take a look at some extra specification details and go through the test results. After some testing, I have figured out that Tinsha X99MH2 uses Q85 chipset, while the orange one X99MH uses H81 chipset. This is quite confusing. That's why I have done some research and surveyed a few of my subscribers. Turns out that Chinese are randomly putting different desktop chipsets on these motherboards. That's why you have to be careful when picking different BIOS modifications. Some of the chipsets might not be compatible with each other, for example, if you try to use a modification for X99 or C612 chipset, your motherboard will be turned into a brick. 
Realtek RTL 816AD is responsible for Ethernet port on these motherboards. Realtek ALC662 is responsible for audio on these two motherboards. CPU power delivery system consists of six pairs of FKBA3004 and FKBA3016 MOSFETs. The first one goes up to 58 ampere, the second one goes up to 108 ampere. It seems like a semi-decent power delivery system, but the test results will show how good it performs with the Xeon 52678 V3. Testing all possible ports on the motherboards, I have got the following. USB 3.0 ports are working ok, but because the motherboards are using cheap desktop chipsets, an external via USB 3.0 controller is required. The speed of the ports is lower than expected, that's why if you are using external SSD or HDD drives or some other USB 3.0 devices, I would not recommend either of these motherboards. USB 2.0, SATA 2.0, SATA 3.0, M.2 slot, all of them are working ok. PCI Express X16 slots are also working ok. The first one is X16, the second one is X4. Fan headers are behaving exactly like on any other Chinese motherboard. Rotation of the 4-pin fans can be adjusted. 3-pin fans are working at 100% rotation speed. I did not detect any issues with the sound quality and the network port is working ok. Testing extra features I have got the following. Sleep mode is not supported. Ubuntu 2004 works on these motherboards. Booting from NVMe drive supported. RAM timings is not available in the BIOS. VRM thermals are quite poor. Using CPU Z AVX stress test, after one hour with the Xeon E5 2678V3 Turbo Boost unlocked, the temperatures went up to 85 or more degrees Celsius. This is a rather poor result. If you plan to install a CPU with 120 or higher TDP rating, I would strongly recommend to add some extra fans to the VRM zone. Restore on AC power loss is also working properly, but there are only on and off states. Usually there is also a state which is called last state. Means if you lose electricity while the computer was off, computer will stay off. If you lose electricity while the computer was on, it will turn on immediately once electricity supply is restored. BIOS chip is the standard Winbond W25Q128BV, it's locked with the BIOS settings, the same as any other Qin Sha motherboard. If you would like to use FPT to read or write your BIOS, you need to go to the BIOS and disable the BIOS write protection. Thanks to a YouTube channel called Technoplaneta, there is a modified BIOS for Qin Sha X99M G2 motherboard. This modified BIOS has good unlocked runtime is configuration options. The BIOS is also compatible with Qinsha X99MH motherboards and it's available in my Mi 899 application. VRM temperature sensors on Qinsha X99MH motherboards are indicating all sorts of values but the real VRM temperature. Additionally, I have a few negative points about the motherboards. Memtest 86 hands at 16%, ADA64 system stability test hands immediately after launch. The first PCI Express X16 slot is rather close to the CPU socket, that's why it's not possible to install a giant CPU cooler such as Noctua and HD15. Testing with the Xeon E5 1660v3, after fresh Windows installation my system was rather unstable. To solve the problem I had to go to the BIOS and disable power technology option. After that I booted back into Windows, installed all required drivers and all system updates, then restarted and went back to BIOS and enabled power technology. This is rather annoying, but after all the system is stable and functioning properly. Tinsha X99MH motherboards do not have Intel Management Engine or IME, nevertheless Windows believes that it's there and it tries to launch it. That's why on Windows startup you may sit in front of your computer, look at the screen and wait and wait and wait until Windows tries to start IME. Eventually it will fail to do that and you will be greeted with a welcome screen. I have tried all sorts of different drivers for different chipsets B85, Q85, H81, X99, C612. Nothing solves the problem. This seems to be an issue in the BIOS which might be solved in the future BIOS modifications. For me the only possible solution for this problem was to open Device Manager and manually disable Intel Management Engine or IME. In this configuration Windows stops trying to start it and boots rather fast. Tinsha X99MH paired with E5 1660v3 gives the following results. 
Turbo Boost works, Memory ECC mode works, Maximum RAM speed is DDR4 2400, I have tested 4 sticks 8GB each, regular desktop memory, as well as 128GB, 4 sticks 32GB each, Samsung DDR4 2133, registered ECC memory. No overclocking is possible on these motherboards. By default the overclocking options are hidden in the BIOS, but you can use Amip CP tool to unlock the overclocking options. This is how I have tested it. The settings are pretty much useless because they do nothing to overclock E5-1660 or any other unlocked CPU. Additionally, I have figured out that using XE ratio limit it's possible to lock all CPU cores of E5-1660 V3 to its maximum turbo boost speed. This was only possible on Tinsha X99MH2. For some reason, if I try to apply the same thing on Tinsha X99MH, the motherboard refuses to start. I was not able to figure out what's the difference between these two boards, which causes one of the motherboards work properly and the other one fail to start. Maybe it's related to the Q85 and H81 chipsets. Anyway, it's absolutely pointless to install CPUs with unlocked multiplier on these boards since they do not support any kind of overclocking possibilities. With i7-5820K I have got pretty much identical results to E5-1660 V3. It turns out that i7-5000 series CPUs can also work with ECC memory. My 128GB 4x32GB Samsung ECC rack memory also works well with i7-5820K. No overclocking is possible either, and XE ratio limit also locks all CPU cores to its maximum turbo frequency. It's important to mention that Tinsha X99MH motherboards are designed rather poorly for CPUs with a limited number of PCI Express lanes. With i7-5820K, the first PCI Express X16 slot works as PCI Express X8, the second PCI Express X16 or X4 slot does not work at all. M.2 slot for PCI Express SSDs works well. Previously, Tinsha X99 D4 didn't work with these CPUs at all, because PCI Express lanes used for the PCI Express X16 slots are not present on the CPUs which do not have 40 PCI Express lanes, such as i7-5820K and i7-6800K. This time Chinese have figured out that at least 8 PCI Express lanes can be connected, but they still didn't manage to connect full 16 lanes for i7-5820K for the first PCI Express X16 slot. Almost the same story can be told about i7-6800K with only two differences. Maximum RAM speed is DDR4-2600 and this CPU does not support registered ECC memory. Tinsha X99MH motherboards are also working well with E5-2620 V4. Everything works as expected. Too bad though, XE ratio limit did not lock all CPU cores to 3 GHz. This option seems to work with the CPUs which have unlocked multiplier only. And of course I have tested the most popular E5-2678 V3. Everything works as expected, XE ratio limit does not have any impact on the performance, but Turbo Boost Unlock works with EFI and FFS drivers. In my Mi 899 application you will find a set of different BIOS modifications for Turbo Boost Unlock and CPU undervolting. This information will be enough to draw a conclusion for Tinsha X99MH motherboards. In my opinion, these are rather pointless motherboards. For the same 60 euros, you can buy Machinist X99Z, which has much less issues. It also supports full quad channel memory configuration. Overall, though, Tietcha X99MH is rather cheap, it's MATX size, and the appearance is not bad at all. Sadly, we also have quite a few cons. Chinese are slapping random desktop chipsets, which require external via USB 3.0 controller. There are only two SATA 3 ports, the other two are SATA 2 ports. There is no overclocking capabilities, ADA64 system stability test and MemTest86 HAN. The motherboards support only two memory channels even though you have four memory slots. i7 CPUs with 28 PCI Express lanes will be limited to only one PCI Express X16 slot and that one will be working as PCI Express X8. Additionally, sleep mode doesn't work and temperature sensors are displaying some kind of a random values. My score for these motherboards would be 5.5 out of 10 and I would much rather buy Machinist X99Z for the same money. Today on AliExpress I have seen a new Machinist X99 revision in white color. I plan to buy this motherboard and check if this motherboard has any differences with the original X99Z, if it's any better or any worse. 
In the video description you will find links to Geekbench 5 result taken on Tinsha X99MH motherboard and Ubuntu 2004, as well as link to the AliExpress shop where I bought my Tinsha X99MH motherboards. For now though, that's all I have for you. Thanks for watching, thanks for listening, I hope you have enjoyed it, goodbye.